We are muted. We are not muted. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because they are starting that, the. Yeah. So I have a couple of collaborators. So sometimes I discuss with them, and specifically in weekends, I talk hmm. to them in Skype, etc. So that's hmm. why I manage something. Hmm. It's not zero, but it's not the way I would have. Well, how is your app? Thank you. It is Arthur presenting, but I don't see anything. You are supposed to fly air. Uh, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, we can see it. Okay. Yeah, so it's the time almost. We will wait for two more minutes, allowing more people to join. Yeah, actually. Hi Sudhakar, how are you? I, I think you're muted. <laughs> Samrat, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay, good, good, good. Hi, Hi everybody. Hello, good evening, everybody. Yeah, show me here. <laughs> yes, hello. Oh, hello. Howdy, Shane. Sachin has professor Liji joined. Yeah, he has joined. Uh, I don't let me see. Oh hi. Oh hi. Ji. How are you? Uh, there you uh, fine. I'm quietly uh, listening. Do, do you remember we are together postdoc at ICTP? Yes. Good. Yes. Yes. As soon as I saw your name, I was so happy. And I was just telling Bal that. I would be happy to have all of you here in Niger in my institute, but somehow the time is not allowing us. Yes, yes, we shouldn't tell how long ago it was. Yes, how long it was, really, yeah. So we 80, should not tell. We should not be our age. 8990, yeah. <laughs> the only thing I see is that, yes. uh, well, I don't develop a beard, but we have kept it till now and it has become white. Yes, white, totally. <laughs> well, this was a long time ago. Salam was there. Abdul Salam was yes, there. Yes, yes, yes. At that time, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, well, a bit old, but still very sharp. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Okay, I quietly go in the background. Yes, we all go quiet and let the organizers take over. Hello? Yes, Najmeen, you are audible. You can carry on. Good evening. On the right hand side, Mr. Asaf University Sinchen, Professor Dilip Shainal, and a woman. Good evening. Honorable Vice Chancellor of Assam University Silchar, Professor Dilip Chandranath, Chief Guest of the Inaugural Ceremony, Professor Edni Balachandran, Guests of Honor, Professor Samit K. Rai and Professor Sudhakar Panda, Dean, School of Physical Sciences, Assam University Silchar, Professor Chiaranja Bhattacharji, the Special Head of Department of Physics, Assam University Silchar, Professor 
Ali Ibrahim Sharma, our conveners of the program, Professor Arthur Deshamukha, Professor Kudi Chakras, and Professor Sachchaitya, this every individual, other dignitaries, faculty members of the university, and attendants of workshop. Now we are going to start the inaugural session of the International Virtual Workshop on Applications of Group Theory in Physics. Nazim, please start off the fan. Yes, ma'am. Please start off the fan. It is there around you. Yeah, a lot of noise. Is it okay now? Better, but not okay. Hello. It's better. Hello, but not okay. You are audible, yes. but uh, lots of noises are still there. I think I think problem with the microphone. Yeah. Fan is not turned on. I think there's a fan on or your own. There's a fan on in your own. Is there any fan around? Nazmi. Fan is off. Okay. Yeah, I think the mic. You can mute your yes, uh, and try joining again. Hello, am I audible, ma'am? Yeah, please continue. Ma'am? Nazin? Nazin? So, so please leave the meeting and join again. From the inaugural section of the international virtual workshop on efficiency of group. Yes, ma'am. Nazneen, please leave okay. the meeting once and join again. You yes, ma'am. Meeting not off. Putting off your. You leave the meeting. Ah, uh, please join it. Yeah, she will be joining. Hello. Okay, you don't have a headphone. Hello. Okay, headphone is not solving the problem. I'm using earphones. Yeah. Okay. Please carry on. You can start from the beginning. I mean, you can restart. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. Now. So, good evening, Honorable Vice Chancellor of Assam University Chair, Professor Dilip Chandranath, Chief Guest of the Inaugural Ceremony, Professor A.P. Balachandran, Guests of Honor, Professor Samit K. Rai and Professor Sudhakar Pandya, Dean School of Physical Sciences, Assam University Chair, Professor Chiranjan Bhattacharji, Respected Head of Department of Physics, Assam University Chair, Professor B. Indratit Sharma, Conveners of the program, Professor Arthur Deshimukhan, Professor Vishwari Chakraborty, and Professor Sachinja Vaidya. Respected invited speakers, other dignitaries, faculty members of the university, and attendees of the workshop. We are going to start the formal inaugural session of the International Virtual Workshop on Applications of Group Theory in Physics. So, at the outset, outset I request Professor Deep Chandranath, Vice of Assam University, to chair the session. With the permission of the chairperson, I am I audible? Yes, I were audible. With the permission of the chairperson, I, Nazneen R. Choudhury, on behalf of the Department of Physics, Assam University Center, welcome you all to this event. This event is a part of the Silver Jubilee celebration of the Department of Physics, Assam University, Silchar. With immense pleasure, we offer our sincere gratitude and thanks to all present here, especially at the times of worldwide pandemic, which has made us bound to make the academic interactions in virtual mode. So before heading forward, I request 
all the participants to kindly keep your camera and mic turned off during the session. Now we request the convener of the workshop, Professor Atri Deshamukha, to share with us the motivation behind organizing such a workshop. Thank you. Thank you, Nazim. Uh, a very good evening to one of our present here. Honorable Vice Chancellor, Asham University Center, Professor Dilip Chandran, Professor Bala Chandran, Professor Rai, Professor Panda, Dean of School of Physical Sciences, Asham University Center, Professor C. R. Bhattacharji, and the speakers of this event, the esteemed speakers, Professor Liji, Professor Boyle, Professor Schultz, Professor Farnsworth, Professor Gobind Rajan, Professor Anand Dashgupta, Professor Chakravarti, and Professor Vaidya. My esteemed colleagues, participants of the event, and dear students. Thank you very much for joining us to this event. As you know, group theory is a branch of mathematics which has extensive use in different branches of physics. Uh, accidentally, we have this group theory course in this current semester, and I'm teaching the course, and I was thinking that in the syllabus, we have it in a very elementary level. Why not to organize a workshop where extensively the applications of group theory in physics will be discussed? And uh, this is during the pandemic, and uh, once Professor Chakravarti just called me, just to ask what is going on in Silger, and he is the son of the soil, and he has interest, he takes lots of interest about what is going on here uh, academically. So that time I just shared with him that uh, I'm thinking of such an event. And incidentally, we the department is celebrating its uh, Silver Jubilee this year. So immediately he said that why not? Let I will get back to you soon. So within a few days he got back to me. Uh, with a tentative list of speakers, and I was surprised to see that uh, the names he's proposing. And then we started working on it. And in between, Professor Sachinda with the from ILC Bangalore, he joined us, and we really worked on it. And it was very nice that all the speakers agreed to speak uh, in this event. And uh, I, I just wish that it will be a grand opportunity for the participants to listen to such uh, stalwarts in the same platform. So uh, that was everything uh, I wanted to share in, at this point of time. We are uh, uh, have that constraint of time. So I just wish that all participants will enjoy. And I, on the other hand, the speakers will also enjoy interacting with the participants. Uh, I have got all supports from my vice chancellor sir. And when I organized that event, uh, I was in the chair of the department. Now uh, my colleague, Professor Indrajit Sharma, has taken over. He has also extended lots of support. So with this, we are here today. And uh, I hope that this whole program will be a successful one. We have already started our academic business with the lectures of Professor Ananda Dashgupta. Uh, this afternoon only he started giving the basics of the group theory to the students just for recapitulation. So this much I want to say. Uh, thank you all. Thank you all, one and all here who has helped us to make this event happening, actually. And over to Najmin. Thank you, ma'am. Now I would like to request Professor B. Indrajit Sharma, Head of Department of Physics uh, of Silchar Campus, Assam University Silchar, to say a few words on this occasion. Thank you, Nasmin. Uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Assam University, Professor T. C. Nath, Dean, Chief Grace, Invited Speaker, and my guest. Indrajit, sir, you are not audible at all. Uh, now, are you audible? Is it audible, Vedam? A, a bit louder. Is it audible? Yes. Yes. Uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Assam University. You have to unmute, I think. Invited speakers, Dean, and their participants. Department of Physics, 
is organizing a 10 days workshop. I congratulate the convener, Professor Ati Desamukhya, for organizing this wonderful workshop. This workshop will convey the group theory and its applications in physics. The speakers of the workshop are the prominent teachers and researchers. We are lucky to have such wonderful speakers and the department is very much thankful to all the speakers for giving this valuable time. I'm sure participants will get great benefit from this workshop. Lastly, I wish this 10 days workshop a great success. Thank you all. Over to Nazdin. Over to Nazdin. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have two other conveners of the event, Professor Vishwadi Chakravarti from SN Bose National Center for Basic Sciences, Kolkata, and Professor Sachindra Vaitya from Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, with us now. On this occasion, we would like to hear a few words from them. So I request Professor Sachindra Vaitya to put, to, uh, to put forward uh, valuable remarks on this occasion. Uh, hello, I hope uh, I'm audible. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to uh, be <coughs> associated with this uh, wonderful event uh, that uh, Atri has put together, this uh, workshop on group theory and its applications in physics. And uh, I hope that uh, the, there will be a strong interactive participation from the students. In the morning, I had the, uh, in the afternoon, I had the uh, pleasure of listening to Professor Dasgupta lecturing, and I did notice that uh, uh, students did uh, uh, participate quite actively. And uh, I would also, at this point, take this opportunity to thank Professor Dasgupta for uh, giving, uh, for reminding students about group theory in this leisurely and elementary style that he is following. It's, it's extremely important uh, that uh, the students uh, become conversant with group theory in order to uh, that uh, in order th that they follow the uh, uh, lectures that will uh, come subsequently. And uh, Professor Dasgupta is doing an admirable job. Uh, I just want to point out that group theory was not very popular with physicists when it first came into quantum mechanics, and uh, in the early days uh, when uh, the <clears throat> when people first, people like Wigner and uh, Hitler, and uh, uh, to some extent, uh, while started to talk about group theoretic ideas, uh, it was uh, referred to as the Gruppen Pest, the pest of groups. What is this group theory that we now have to learn in order to understand elementary facts about atomic and molecular physics? But uh, group theory has uh, survived that skepticism and grown and become a very important part of how we understand uh, modern physics. And uh, it's uh, therefore a, uh, it's a great pleasure for me to be uh, part of this program. And I'm very happy that uh, Atri has uh, put together a, a terrific session for us over the next week. Thank you. I think it's over to Biswajit now. OK, let me begin by conveying my greetings to all the people in the Thank you, sir, for your audience. Words. So shall I start now, Nadim, or you have to say some words? OK, let me begin by conveying my greetings to everyone. Oh, sir, uh, it's your turn. It plays something. Thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, as appropriate because the people are scattered all over the globe now. So <clears throat> let me uh, tell you right from the outset that I am a son of the soil. You can count me as an ex right And uh, in this uh, way, I am very happy to do something for Shilchar and the people in the students in the northeastern part region, particularly. Of course, here are students from all over India, and this uh, actually is due to the credit goes to 
uh, Atri Deshmukh mainly, Professor Atri Deshmukh. I know her for quite some times now, and um, whenever she has come up with some suggestion like this, I always encouraged her, particularly this time since it happened to be Silver Jubilee celebration, and she proposed that why not organize a meeting on group theory. I grabbed this opportunity immediately, and um, I started contacting well-known people, at least you should have some around seven, eight people. So I started contacting everybody nationally and internationally both. And it is my good luck that all the famous people who are really leaders in this field in the international level have all agreed to give, participate in give talks. <laughs> and people like Latham Boyle, Frederick Scoge, Fadeli Lidzi, Shane Farnsworth, and also nationally, T.R. Professor T.R. Govindrajan and Sachin himself, who has actually agreed to my proposal to become joint convener when we, myself and Atri requested him, he readily agreed. He has given a very good support. So all of them have agreed to give their talks. And also we have requested Anand, Professor Anand Dashgupta and, um, from Iser Kolkata because he's a very good teacher, he's well known. And he's already started giving two lectures this morning. He has already given two lectures. I had the privilege of uh, listening to his lectures. And it was very good indeed. And the students really were very motivated and were interacting with him. Finally, I should must mention that I also contacted Professor N.P. Balachandran right at the beginning. But given his age, he was a bit reluctant to speak for two or three lectures. But he readily agreed when I proposed, why not give some inspirational talk, motivational talk to the students? Because after all, Professor Balchandran is an international physicist, well known all over the world. And his collaboration <laughs> spreads over all over the globe, virtually. And I you can vouch for it that with his presence here today and with his motivational speech, the students will be motivated and inspired to pursue physics. It is a sad thing, although I hail from this region, that this region is a bit underrepresented in the national and international level as far as theoretical physics is concerned. So it is really high time that we boost up the morale of the students and try to change their mindset. And at least for the bright ones, we should tell them that physics can be a good career option also. It's not that everybody has to do management or medicine or engineering. So this, they have to come out of the mindset. So I felt that this exposure to international people of high standing will do a very good job. And um, I therefore requested Professor Balachandran to give at least a keynote address and he readily agreed. And we carried out from there. And today this uh, whole thing has been designed by, basically by Professor Atri Deshamukko. All this program, everything has been <clears throat> and by them. So we look forward to a very nice talk by Professor Balchandran, A Life on Science. I must say that Professor Balchandran, maybe people from outside the discipline may not know him, but he is regarded as one of the topmost NRI physicists, if I can say so, because he's still holding Indian passport. And he is there in US from early 60s and has been working in Syracuse University since then. He will tell you all these things during his talk. And he has uh, guided around 40 students. And almost all of them are very well placed all over US, Europe, and very other, various other places. Even two of our speakers here, Professor Chachinde Vaidyo and um, Fedeli Lizzi, were his ex-students. Not only that, Professor T.R. Govindrajan also has been a long time collaborator with Professor Balachandran. And uh, I also did not have the privilege of working with him as such collaborating, co-authoring a paper. Nevertheless, I was a student of him because when I did my PhD in IMSC, he used to visit there once or twice in a year and used to give lectures on group theory, differential geometry and stuff like that. So I slowly started learning. And at the time, Institute of Mathematical Physics, we had a very famous physicist, Professor Isiji Shudarshan, who was the director. And he was also very inspiring. And Professor Balchanan had a long collaboration with him for many years. So probably we'll get to hear some of the stories and anecdotes about those 
<coughs> about those times and the interactions he had. And uh, so we look forward to a very nice series of talks by various speakers. And for tonight, tonight for us actually in India, we look forward to a very nice talk by Professor Balchandran at 8 p.m. Indian Standard Time. So with that, let me wrap up here. Thanks. Thank you so much, sir. <coughs> now I would like to request the chief guest, Professor A.P. Balachandran, Syracuse University, New York, to address the web gathering. It may be noted that Professor Balachandran is delivering the keynote address of this workshop immediately after the formal inaugural session. But for now, uh, I request him to kindly say a few words on this occasion. Uh, Professor Balachandran, you're muted. Who are we talking to? That that was me, Latham Boyle. We met in oh, Kolkata. I see. Okay. Uh, all right. I'm unmuted nice now. Nice to see you. Okay. Uh, Hi, Professor. Hello, Nathan, nice yeah. to see you. <laughs> okay. Let's put in my nice time. Nice to see you. Yeah. Let's put in head of the department. Let's put in dean. I see that the uh, Professor Rai from the Ghost Institute is also there. My greeting is to him also. And of course, my old friends, all of them are here. Vishwajit is here, Sudhagar is here, Sachin. I greet all of you. And let me start by apologizing for this unusual time for this meeting. Uh, I could not help it because of the fact that there is a ten and a half hour difference. And while normally at this time I would be in Chennai, it is impossible to do that now. Okay? So I am locked up in Syracuse and there is a ten and a half hour difference between the two places. Okay? Uh, I was, uh, when Bishiji contacted me to uh, participate in this meeting, okay? uh, I, of course I readily agree, but I was, he also asked me whether I can give talks. Of course, with, Talks, you have to prepare, uh, group theory or whatever, you have to prepare notes. And I was very reluctant to do that, okay, because of the time it takes. But of course, I will talk to the students and all of you about how my career has been shaped by events, many of which, I, many of whom I had no control. Okay? But we will talk about it as we keep going. I'm very happy that Assam is celebrating his, Assam University is celebrating his Silver Jubilee. I wish it all a glorious future to come. Okay? And in, if there is any way in which I can help, I will be very glad to do that also. Okay? With that, I think I will conclude. Thank you. OK. Hello. Can you hear me? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. But again, I'm not Thank you so much, I sir. You. Now I welcome our guest of honor, Professor Samit K. Rai, Director. It is some problem with the laptop. Director of uh, Ascent Boost yes, National Center for Basic Sciences, Kolkata, and, and Professor Sudhakar Panda, Director of National Institute of uh, Science Education and Research, Bhubaneswar. So now may I request now Professor Samit Kirai to say a few words on this question. Okay, thank you everybody. And it is a really my pleasure to be a part of this uh, inauguration on the application of group theory in physics. So I, of course, uh, do not come from a theoretical background, so I remember that uh, when we were doing my our, our MSc courses at IIT Kharagpur, so group theory was one of the elective courses. So being in the context of matter physics, of course, we didn't have much opportunity to choose that particular course, and we thought we never need that kind of course. But when I really came into my research, PhDs and higher studies, then really I understood that we did some a mistake. And my other friend, Sudhakar Panda, who will be speaking of just after me, probably he is, since he was in theory, he obviously chosen that course. 
So I want to congratulate the university, particularly the Assam University, in this pandemic situation, taking such a basic subject in physics, not only physics, physics and mathematics, and make a very, uh, I mean, very 10 days, very intensive program starting from basics to applications, particularly for the students. And this will be really a huge boost for the students who are already a little bit under a little bit of psychological pressures because they are not in the university, not in their uh, research. So I am sure this will keep them busy for not only for these 10 days, maybe for another one month or so for uh, understanding that what they understood and what they didn't understand. So when Professor Bishri Chakraborty uh, requested me, I readily agreed because I know his uh, kind of a the son of the soil of the Assam, the particular Silchor. And I remember that about two years back, we have got that, uh, that 125th birth anniversary of SN Bosch. So when I told Professor Chakravut, you have to go to Northeast for some kind of a outreach program, he said, definitely, but it should be Silchor. And I also have a connection with the Silchor. I have got one of my students, the faculty in the NIT Silchor, of course, not in the university. Uh, but till now, I could not really visit at that place. It's very nice to see many of the friends whom we met about two years back. Professor Balchandran was there for about a week or so in the National Post Center. Professor Liji was there to giving some of the Bose 125 colloquium, my friend Shudhakar. And I probably met Shushin Bhadu earlier in one of these conferences. So it's a really wonderful uh, organization that you are doing. And I'm sure that students will enjoy a lot. And I wish a good luck for this particular international workshop in the online mode. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. And now I would like to request Professor Sudhakar Pandya to share his thoughts on this question. Uh, am I audible now? Hello, am I audible? Yes. Yes, yes. yes. You are audible. Yes, you are. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, respected Vice Chancellor, uh, Professor, Professor Nath, and my good old days friend, philosopher, and guide. He is known as Professor Balachandran, but we fondly call him Bal. And uh, then I pleasantly surprised to see most of my friends in this platform, TRG, which you know as TR Govindarajan, then I 30 years ago, we are overlapping with Professor Liji as postdoc in ICTP, Sachin, Vishwajit, all of you are here, <clears throat> and of course my collaborator, Autri. And since uh, I have been a regular <clears throat> visitor to Assam in Virtual Silchar in various ways, like arranging meetings, refresher course, so I know almost the whole department. And um, I was very happy to learn that the university is now celebrating the Silver Jubilee and have something to do with it. And I thank the organizers that they remembered me today to have a few words and at least come to close contact with my friends. And the topic which has been chosen, and I think the credit goes to mostly to Biswajit. And once he came in contact with Sachin, I also thank both of them for giving this helping hand to the Department of Physics, Assam University Silchar. Uh, my friend Samit told that maybe Sudhakar being theoretical physics will know much more about group theory. Samit, let me inform you that and others in the audience. When I passed out of IIT Kharagpur MSc, I had only heard of point groups and space groups because that is what was taught to us in our X-ray crystallography course. And I thought that the end of the group theory, not the time that time, I'm talking about 82, 80, 82 to 84, sorry, 80 to 82. And we didn't have any other source unless someone is giving a group, group theory course, which was possibly a course in mathematics department and not physics department. But as I moved in to do my PhD in Institute of Physics, 
and suddenly people like professor balachandram people like professor yogesh pati they used to visit and suddenly i before even in the quantum mechanics course where you learn about angular momentum algebra which is su2 we are hearing about products group su2 cross su3 cross u1 it was all looking to me as if some movie is going on and it was hard time for me to enter into the field of mainly because of friends around to talking to them and reading yourself from the books and i landed up working in virasur algebra katsmodi algebra cojet space groups what was looking like to me a, to me as a big problem and frightening me to enter in but at least with the help of the people i mentioned and of course for the students let me tell you until you put your effort and learn no courses no lectures will help you it is only you you have to sit down or uh, whether not with your phone or with your computer pen and paper you have to learn with pen and paper and give the talks whatever you learn to others test the questions from them then find the answer for yourself that the only way of learning okay group theory does not meet sit in a group and discuss something no you have to learn by yourself find your own questions and find your own answer at least try to if you are not able to get it talk to the experts talk to friends nowadays you can send messages or uh, whatsapp messages emails find out them with so much of distance we could do that i am actually envious of you all these participants who are in this school because i wish i was lucky to have this sort of people talking to be talking to us or i am a participant about group theory possibly that would i would have become little bit more learned about group theory if it would have happened to my time which was possibly 30 years 35 years ago i missed it but if you are lucky i congratulate all of you joining this take the full advantage of this 10 days course and enjoy thank you all giving me the time to talk and i wish all the best to us for this workshop to be completed in proper way thank you all thank you very much sir moving on now may i request the dean albert einstein school of physical sciences assam university teacher professor sriranjan bhattacharya to say a couple of words Uh, honorable vice chancellor professor dilip chandranath professor b indrajit sharma head department of physics professor atri deshmukh convener of the workshop professor sachin dao vaidya professor vishwajit chakraborty co conveners faculty members and dear students scholars and participants and esteemed speakers in the workshop professor ap balachandran the chief guest of this workshop professor fadli lizi professor frederick scholes professor laltham boyle professor anand dashgupto professor t r govindarajan dr shan farnsworth and guest of honor professor shamit kumar roy from snbn cs cbs professor sudhakar panda of nisa uh, bhuvaneshwar it is indeed a great opportunity for me in the school of physical science to welcome you all to the program being organized by the physics department of our university the domain of group theory in its various form has not has its root in the theory of algebraic equations number theory and geometry with joseph louis lagrange and neil hendrick abel and everesty galloy as early contributor this was late 18th century since then the concept of group theory evolved in depth and breadth in the preceding centuries today its significance is not only recognized in contemporary mathematics but also in chemistry physics even in biology universal laws are symmetric 
under translation in space and time. They don't seem to change from place to place or from today to tomorrow. Knowledge of such symmetry in atoms, molecules, crystals, and in all frames of references is very vital to our understanding of the material world. Symmetries lie at the heart of the laws of nature. Early scientific giants, Galileo, Descartes, and Newton had implicit in their ideas of comprehensive framework of the universe, the concept of symmetry and group theory. From general relativity to quantum field theory, symmetries constitute explicitly the basis of modern physics. Therefore, it needs no mention that a workshop on group theory will not only integrate the concept of group theory with applications, but also bring about a lot of new excitement and new knowledge for our scholars and students to diversify and contribute more effectively to a better and realistic understanding of the cosmos. Getting eminent experts from reputed institutions across the world and our own country together to share the knowledge and expertise in a common platform is no mean task. The Department of Physics has been leading the way, hosting successfully several such important events. And skills in diverse areas with a blend of experienced and young faculties and enterprising brilliant PhD scholars, the Department of Physics in its 25th year of existence is now a vibrant place for academic pursuit. I congratulate every one of you for your continued efforts and contribution in achieving the cherished goal. I welcome all the distinguished speakers for the workshop once again and acknowledge your valuable support. To all the participants of the workshop, wishing you all very good time and expressing our profuse thanks for attending this workshop and fulfilling the very objective of organizing such events. I wish you all a very meaningful and rewarding learning experience. Plenty of wishes for the organizers for a successful workshop. Thank you, everybody. Welcome to this workshop once again. Thank you. Over to Nazneen. Thank you so much, sir. I now would like to request the chairman of the session, Professor Dilip Chandranath, Vice Chancellor, Assam University Center, to enlighten us with his precious words. Namaskar. Uh, good evening to everybody. Uh, I am pleased that the Ashram University, uh, basically in collaboration with IIC Bangalore and uh, SN Bosch Institute, uh, together organizing because I find that the uh, two conveners from these two great institutes and the uh, Department of Physics actually a part of their uh, Silver Jubilee celebration. Uh, they they organize uh, for this 10 days uh, very very specific topic on the on the group theory uh, the professor Ati Deshmukh uh, who took the initial lead and we have with us professor um, Ivy uh, D. I. Sharma of the physics head and uh, I'm thankful to the professor Baito and professor Chakravarti because their collaboration made it very successful uh, it will be a very successful one and I find the, the chief guest uh, of this um, inaugural session, Professor Balashand and I came to know that he is a very learned person and he is there also. And we have with us two directors uh, of the uh, SNB CBS, uh, Professor Shamit uh, Kirai and uh, director Niger Bhuvaneshwar Professor uh, Shudakar Panda and we have the, the Dean Professor Sir Bhattacharji, the faculty members of the Asha believers in other uh, uh, parts of India, maybe outside. Uh, 
and the CSER scholar students, uh, I think we are the most uh, benefited uh, from such a uh, you know specified and specific uh, area. And and finally, the galaxy of uh, speaker uh, very difficult to you know gather them uh, in such a one platform. And it is of course the the gift to the COVID uh, possible. Otherwise, even the university possibly possibly we could not. Um, you know, bring them to university, but definitely they will come. Uh, I like them. They should come to our university and see the small university of uh, 25 years. Now, group theory is a, uh, I find such an important uh, area of uh, learning from mathematics. As a statistician, uh, I have also learned the group theory uh, as a graduate student uh, because we find that there are a lot of applications. Uh, in specifically the design of experiment, and and you know those are you know whole days I have forgotten now because I I did my master uh, completed in 1975. So and then maybe in research time sometimes when we need you know we read and then apply uh, uh, to address uh, many issues uh, to solve many problems of statistical uh, thinking we use the uh, uh, this group theory. And now group theory dominates in many, I understand. The cryptology is one such area where it finds a lot of application in the group theory. I understand uh, this 10 days uh, learning uh, from such a galaxy of speaker. Uh, the students, uh, specifically research scholars, will be immensely benefited. And that will make this, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the virtual uh, uh, series of lectures uh, more successful and uh, with the leadership of Professor Atri and uh, and the uh, Sharma, and of course uh, we cannot omit uh, Professor Chakravarti and Professor Bhaddo. Uh, I understand from their, you know, they are taking care of bringing such a good speaker from four continents. It's a wonderful thing, you know, bringing the speakers from the four continents on a particular very specific issue, and it makes that that is such an important area. Even I like to see it all over, you know, learning never ends. So I also find that I can, you know, uh, learn something more on the group theory. Sometimes we face, uh, you know, some solution of problem, and then we use the mathematics. And mathematics is the root of all sciences, you know. Wherever you go, science without mathematics, we can cannot proceed. So uh, I, 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 I hope that uh, this will be a very successful uh, uh, virtual seminar in the Assam University, uh, basically in collaboration with the IISC and SN Bose Institute. Uh, 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 my all the best wishes for them, and I am thankful to all the speakers uh, who will be giving their time, specifically very, I find very senior persons and the young persons, and then, then they are together and learning. So thank you all. Let us make this um, uh, virtual seminar a successful one. And I request my uh, students and, and the research scholar to interact with this, you know, maybe a uh, one third of the lecture should be with interaction only then indicates that they are learning something. Otherwise, if you keep silent means, you know, we don't know whether you are learning or you are adapting or not. So thank you all once again. Namaskar. Jai Hind. Uh, over to Najmin. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I am done. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, with this, we have come to the end of the inaugural session. I request Dr. Himadri Sekhar Dash. Of... Hello. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Am I audible? Thank you so much, sir. With this, we have come to the end of the inaugural session. I now I request Dr. Himadri Shekhar Das of Assam University, Silja, Department of Physics, to propose the vote of thanks. Yeah, good evening to all. Uh, am I audible? Yeah. So we are already running. Uh, we are already running late by 16 minutes. So I'll quickly show my vote of thanks uh, to all of you. Uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor Professor Dilip Chandra Nath, sir, Chairperson of the Organizing Committee, Professor B. Indrajit Sharma, Chief Guest Professor F. P. Balachandran, sir, Guests of Honors, uh, Professor Samit Kumar Ray and Professor Sudhakar Panda, 
Dean Albert Einstein School of Physical Sciences, Professor C. R. Bhattacharya, our most valued invited guests, my colleagues, participants, research scholars, and students. It is my privilege to have been asked to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion. I, on behalf of the Department of Physics, Assam University, Silchar, and let me call it Fraternity of Physicists, here together in application of group theory in physics and international virtual workshop. And on my own behalf, extend a very hearty vote of thanks to all the speakers for gracing your important work and sharing with us your findings. Group theory, apart from being an important area in mathematics, also plays an indispensable role of modern day physics. This workshop intends to provide a glimpse to these various applications of group theory in physics, starting from the very basic uh, to some of the most exciting areas of theoretical physics. As told by convener, uh, Professor Atsida Shomukko, uh, this workshop is a part of uh, Silver Jubilee celebration of our department. I would like to take this opportunity to place on reco uh, record our hearty thanks to invited speakers, Professor Epi Balachandran, uh, Professor Fedel Liji, Professor Frederick G. Scholz, Professor Latham Boyle, Professor Shan Fransford, uh, Professor Arandu Dashgupta, Professor T. R. Govindarajan, uh, Professor Sachin Deo Vaidya, who is also co convener of this uh, uh, workshop, Professor Bishwajit Chakraborty, who is also co convener of this workshop. I am thankful to all the participants for attending this virtual workshop. We have been uh, <clears throat> fortunate to have some of the eminent persons from academia. I am sure that the participants will be benefited by attending this workshop. We are also thankful to our university administration uh, for giving us all support uh, to organize uh, this workshop. Thanks to all faculty of the various departments of Assam University Silchar. Uh, as well as the non-teaching staff for their support. Electronic media and print media are also acknowledged for covering the news of this workshop. Finally, I must not forget to thank the volunteers, the research scholars, and the students' teams who contributed to organizing this conference until the last days of the week. I'd like to thank you again for making this event a success. Over to Nazneen. Thank you so much, sir. Now, with permission of the chair, we conclude this formal inauguration session here. We are entering into the technical session now. And so, I hand over the platform to Ms. Devolina Paul. Thank you all. Over to you, Devolina. Hello. Hello. Hello, Devolina, are you around? What is happening now? Yeah, nothing is happening, sir. Uh, okay. So we uh, we we have uh, completed our formal inaugural session. Now we were waiting for this part of the ceremony. Uh, this keynote address for the whole workshop will be delivered by Professor uh, A.P. Balachandran. And uh, we are all are eagerly waiting to uh, hear from you, sir. Uh, just before you start, I will request uh, Professor Shachin Dev to please introduce Professor Balajandran to the audience. Professor Sachin, please. Yeah. Hi. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. You are audible. Okay. okay great. So uh, it is, of course, a great pleasure for me to introduce Bal. Uh, as he is known to uh, all his uh, friends, collaborators, and colleagues. And uh, uh, I just want to give a short uh, history of uh, what, uh, what is publicly known about Bal. Uh, so uh, Professor Balachandran did his PhD from, uh, uh, from Madras University, as it was called at that time. And he did two postdocs, one in Vienna and another in Chicago. And I think it was uh, around uh, the mid or the late 60s that he joined Syracuse University as a as, as assistant professor. 
and he was there at Syracuse uh, till his retirement a few years ago. Uh, so uh, from the time that uh, he has uh, he has been an active physicist, which I would say from his uh, early twenties, he has uh, worked on a really large uh, variety of uh, topics. And I just want to uh, mention a few of them to give you an idea of the kind of breadth he has demonstrated over uh, over the decades that he has uh, kept up uh, or pursued his interest in physics. So if I remember correctly from uh, from looking at his early papers, his uh, uh, his uh, interest in his early work is based on um, uh, Jeffrey Chu's S matrix theory and how it how it applies to various non perturbative aspects of pion physics. And uh, subsequently, he moved on to uh, looking at uh, uh, skirmions, skirmion physics, how one understands baryons in as quantum skirmions. Around the same time, he uh, developed uh, uh, a great interest and helped clarify aspects of non abelian monopoles and their symmetries. And in fact, uh, with his collaborators, he showed a very important result, which is that uh, non-abelian monopoles do not respect uh, non-abelian symmetry that you expect them to respect. And it's also around the time that he's done important work on index theory and anomalies as they arise in non-abelian gauge theories. He's also worked on, uh, on uh, somewhat more theoretical aspects of uh, condensed matter like quantum Hall effect and the insight that he had he arrived at from those uh, from those studies he applied with some of his students to understand the ideas of entanglement and emergent entropy in uh, two plus one dimensional quantum gravity uh, this is a uh, very telegraphic description of his work uh, uh, Till about I would say the 90s, and I'm sure I've missed out some of the some at least some interesting things that he has done. But at, it, it's, it is around that time that uh, uh, Baal got interested in non-commutative geometry, and uh, along with uh, his uh, uh, students and collaborators, started to look at uh, various kinds of non-commutative spaces. Uh, I would say that uh, that is, as far as I understand, that is the start of his interest in non-commutative geometry and non-commutative field theories, which has continued to today. Uh, he still maintains a great interest in, in this subject. And uh, most, more recently, though, his uh, interests have centered around non-perturbative quantization of gauge theories and questions relating to Poincaré and other global symmetries of these theories. So I would say overall, Baal's research interest may broadly be described as uh, trying to understand and push forward our understanding of topological of uh, of uh, quantum field theories, primarily using topological and algebraic tools. So uh, when we say when I say algebraic tools, it is with a discrete nod towards group theory and such uh, uh, such related algebraic tools that uh, that uh, he and his collaborators have used uh, successfully to understand and uh, push forward the boundaries of our uh, of uh, boundaries of our knowledge uh, bal as uh, some of you might know has uh, ha also uh, had many students if i remember correctly he has guided 39 phd students and a uh, large number of these people well the the, the junior most one i would say the last his last PhD student just uh, got a faculty position in IIT Bhuvaneshwar. Uh, his uh, senior most uh, uh, student, I would say, is uh, Pierre Ramond, who is also uh, uh, well known to at least in this definitely in the string community, but also to uh, most of theoretical physicists. So, without much uh, more uh, to add, I would uh, ask Bal to. Uh, deliver the keynote address. Thank you. OK, OK. All right. All right. Shall I start, Shall I start now? now? Yes, okay. I suppose so. OK. I have to do the present, uh, present share my screen. So I am doing that. OK. It, I hope it works. Otherwise, um, I'm there. 
I am trying to share my screen. One moment. Yes, sir. I, can you see my screen? Yes. You can see my screen. Okay. So I'll start now. Okay. Um, uh, I am assuming that the situation is under control. Okay. I again greet uh, all the senior people here, the vice chancellor, the dean, head of the department, Atri Doshimukhya, and of course my friends Bishwajit, Sachin, Fedele. Uh, Frederick probably is here as well. Okay. Uh, many greetings to all of you. Yeah. And this talk, uh, Bishwajit, according to the uh, suggestions of Bishwajit, is addressed to the students okay. and to share my own experiences in life. Okay. Growing up in India, okay, in Kerala, what happened to me and what happened, what is maybe happening to other people as well. Okay. So, dear students, you are all starting on your career and are fired, I suppose, by curiosity and about fundamental physics. And you hope, as I did at that one time, of making a very important contributions. I expect that there is also a great deal of frustration at your isolation, and lack of contact with many active physicists, because you are in the northeast of India, which is somewhat remote from research centers like Kolkata or further south or further east of Calcutta, okay? further west of Calcutta. Okay? I too grow, grew up in comparative isolation. Okay? I'll tell you about it later. Okay? But in one way, maybe your situation, I think, is much better than what I and people of my generation until quite recently encountered. Okay? The point is that with the development of the internet, you can access scientific material with ease and also attend seminars, courses, conferences on a daily basis. These are essential, invaluable tools to uh, overcome isolation. In fact, my personal experiences since the onset of COVID-19 testifies to this new reality, which is uh, confronting the academic people. We, okay, my colleagues and I, including Sachin, Location like Fedele yeah, have discussions essentially on a daily basis okay, on physics. Okay. And in particular, we have also revived our brainstorming sessions, which we used to have in room 316 of the physics department. Okay. Uh, Fedele and Sachin were active participants where we used to argue for hours, okay, as we have been able to revive them as luminars. Under, room, under, under the title of Room 316. Okay? So it is going on every two weeks we meet in this Room 316. Okay? In fact, if any of, your, any of you want to join it, please send me an email. I'll put you on the list, sir. Okay? Uh, various academic, various people in the group, okay? various people with whom we are in contact. Uh, normally, what happens is they present their ideas and or maybe emergent ideas. And there is uh, open discussion uh, with a lot of interruptions, as would happen in a um, discussion context. Okay. So the academic life of a research physicist is undergoing a basic change, I think. Okay. I think it is for good, for permanent. It is becoming global okay, and perhaps more stimulating as well. Okay. In fact, global, I mean, I am sitting in Syracuse, in the US and uh, talking and collaborating with people in Brazil, with India, uh, with Europe, this was uh, on a daily basis with no time delay, and this was impossible before. So uh, I imagine that you can adapt adopt these changing academic lifestyles and overcome the isolation. Okay? But there were no such possibilities when I was growing up. Uh, but I suppose that even with the availability of these possibilities, I imagine that having to attend classes, take exams, get get good grades puts a lot of pressure. Okay? But perhaps with great determination, we can spare the time also to use the new opportunities available now. There are many influences affecting us while growing up. And it is not easy to understand what are important in our final formation, if there is a final formation, because human beings keep changing 
as time progress, as time passes. Perhaps in my case, from what I remember, they were the social upheavals and the intellectual fervor Kerala was undergoing at that time. So th those were the we are talking about the uh, early 50s and later on okay, uh, in the 60s, and we were exposed to many new ideas, okay, which also led me to read popular books on science. Okay. I remember vividly Gamo, Eddington, and Einstein. This was in my high school days and college days too. Uh, uh, as an aside, let me mention the importance of new ideas in teachers in our formulation. It is well told by the recent history of Indian mathematics. It was much to a Jesuit priest who was uh, teaching in the Loyola College in Chennai. His name was Father Rasain. He's legendary. And he taught mathematics for several years there. And as a teacher, especially, devoted himself to finding and nurturing young talent in the subject. He spent a considerable amount of time with talented students outside the classroom in particular. It was by this means, more than any other, that he introduced students to what was good mathematics and, uh, and also teaching them to distribute trivial problems from deep and profound ones. Okay. In the words of Sheshadri, there is a noise. Okay. Uh, uh, in the words of Sheshadri, who unfortunately passed away recently, one of our greatest mathematicians in the post-war post era, he was not a good teacher in the classroom, Fra Father Rasain, but nevertheless, an extraordinary teacher. Some of Rasain's best students played a, leading, played a leading role in the development of the School of Mathematics in the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, which is acknowledged to be internationally being one of the leading groups in research in mathematics in this country or abroad. Okay. Among them were Sheshadri, M.S. Narasimhan and C.P. Ramanujan. You may know some of these names. Uh, uh, but I did not have a father Rasain to guide me. However, I did have outside teachers in school. One was an acclaimed poet in Malayalam. Uh, and another used to challenge us with naughty prob mathematical problems. He used to come to the class. Uh, I think I was in the uh, fourth form at the time of that, the way we were counting at that time. And he will state some problem in geometry uh, uh, or uh, algebra. On the, he, write the pro, he will write the problem and ask us students, the whole class, to come and join, uh, to think it through and give an answer. And it was very challenging and very real. Well, those who found the answer, we were uh, thrilled. But those who did not were somewhat, uh, somewhat unhappy. Okay? And we had also had, as I said earlier, we had access to popular science books. Those were the school days. My college at the BSc honors level was in Madras Christian College. Okay? It, it has a legendary history. We, we will hear about it later as we keep going. It was established by the Church of Scotland in 1837. Okay? One sees that the uh, interchange of ideas globally has played a very important role academically in India as well elsewhere. For example, we know that the, uh, the literacy, educations, schools were established in Kerala by Christian missionaries in the 1800s. Okay. For young people like, uh, like me, gave a wonderful chance to meet people from all over India and also exposed us, especially to English poetry and literature, in which the professor specialized. There were also weekly discussion meetings okay, where, where we came across the wondrous world of quantum physics and black holes. Not that we understood much, okay, but certainly we became excited and keen for a deeper knowledge of science. After my BSc honors, an event happened, which also shows the influence of teachers in shaping research careers. Exactly in that year, my good luck, in 18, 1958, Alladi Ramakrishnan, a physics professor at Madras University, initiated a new MSc course in theoretical nuclear physics. I would say without doubt that Alladi was the forerunner, was the creator of a uh, research in theoretical physics in, in Chennai. Okay? And in fact, the south of India, I would say, 
bar in Bangalore. Many of us, maybe seven or eight of us, joined it at that time. We saw the ad in the Hindu newspaper, and maybe seven or eight of us joined it without any idea what we were getting into. Alladi, Alladi also did not, the, the remarkable thing was Alladi also did not know the subject. He followed the sink or swim method of teaching. We were forced to read things like Dirac's book on quantum mechanics, Feynman's lectures on Feynman graphs. I mean, without any, just like that. For, you had, we, were, we will go to the class and he will present us with these books. And also, he will present things like Blatt and Weisskopf, which was a massive tome on nuclear physics, on nuclear physics lecture, and tell us to read chapters and lecture to each other. We emerged from that year very much bruised, but very independent souls, yeah? and with sporadic knowledge of even quantum mechanics. Yeah? We managed to complete our doctoral degrees with Alladi, and by mid 1962, we joined the postdoctoral circuit. Yeah? The period 1958 to 62 was a turning point of our lives. This is the time we spent in Chennai with Alladi. Yeah? We were enthused by reading basic books. As I mentioned, Dirac and Feynman still come to mind. You also met different physicists. Okay? They will turn out there basically as two is. Okay? Niels Bohr came, Abdul Salam. Uh, Abdul Salam came and lectured to us, and he also bought saris in Kanchiburam. Okay? Chandrasekhar, Chandrasekhar is from Chennai. Light Hill, the very well known person in uh, fluid dynamics and uh, applied mathematics. Not that we understood them, but never mind about that. We were thrilled just to meet them and talk to them. Okay. From that point onwards, my intellectual experiences were nothing remarkable, except for an interlude of two months or so. Okay. I first went to the University of Vienna, where Walter Thiering was working to rebuild the Central European science, which was destroyed by the war. Okay. You must read, I strongly urge you, to read Carl Sigmund's book, Exact Thinking in Demented Times, about the Vienna Circle in the 30s okay, and how the Nazis destroyed it. This is a very inspiring book. It tells what was, hap what was happening in Vienna. In fact, what was happening was that they were having weekly discussions uh, on exact thinking. They were exploring what, what, is, what is reality with absolutely no uh, respect for the greatest names you can imagine, including Einstein. Okay? So, and they were meeting every week and arguing and trying to uh, settle issues. People like uh, Gödel, for example, was part of that group. And it, uh, the forerunner of that group was Boltzmann. Bulls, and how the Nazis destroyed this whole thing is very well re recounted, very inspiringly, very readably recounted by Carl Sigmund in this book. Okay? Now, uh, Salam, as I was saying in the uh, when I was a postdoc, Salam conducted a grand summer school in Trieste in 1962 as a prelude to gathering support and funds for ICT for the International Center for Theoretical Physics. This was in 1962. Okay, so we went. We took a train from Vienna, went to Trieste, uh, uh, and the uh, the school was quite thrilling for young young people like like me, it was spectacular. Uh, the Schwinger was there and presented a soluble model, which I took notes for, and with a Chilean physicist, Savedra. Then there were people like Wigner, uh, there was Whiteman, uh, rising stars like Kutkowski and Frauchi, okay? and Salam presented dinky diagrams in this in inimitable way, okay? inimitable way. And we did not even know the basics of group theory. You are ready for Dinkin diagrams. Very, you will be ready for Dinkin diagrams very soon. And actually, the 1962 volume of the proceedings you can still access from. It is still available in the in book in uh, internet. Okay. Well, from Vienna, I went to Chicago as a postdoc. The ambience in, in Chicago was too competitive and hostile for someone like me who knew so, so very little. Okay. The the educational career was so sketch. Uh, uh, what is it? Sporadic. We will learn something here and something there and keep going. Okay? 
even if we did not understand, we will pursue and we will persist in trying to understand what is that, persist to go forward. Mm. In that uh, ambience, it is very difficult to encounter a very hostile atmosphere. And that's what happened for me to Chicago. But that is what happened to me in Chicago. Well, from Chicago. Well, sorry, something has gone wrong with your presentation. It is strong. What is happening? Uh, the whole presentation is strong a bit. You can see as if a postcard, nothing is happening. Just see what, what has gone wrong. Is it true for others or I have, I have this problem? Sachin? Hello? Sachin, how do you see the presentation? Yeah, I can see Bal's presentation. Uh, what you, uh, Sudhakar, what you can do is you can pin it and then it becomes almost full screen on your uh, okay. browser. Okay. Visible to me, no problem. Okay, yeah. go ahead. So, shall I go ahead? Yeah. All right. Yes, sir. From Vienna, I went to, as I was saying, from Vienna, uh, I went to Chicago, and from Chicago, I was, um, uh, Professor George Sudarshan, okay, my old friend, he gave me a position as an assistant professor at Syracuse University, which he had just joined. This was in 1964, okay? And I have been there since, uh, ever since, okay? My major intellectual developments okay, in a co more coherent way took place there. Okay. Uh, it really happened through my constant interaction with the uh, people there, especially the students and maybe postdocs. We used to meet every afternoon, except Saturdays and Sundays. We used to meet every afternoon around 2.30, 2, 2.30, around in, in room 316 of the physics building and have very long discussions. This discussion starting around afternoon will go till six o'clock or seven o'clock. And sometimes we will split and go to dinner somewhere in some restaurant together. In this way, driven by curiosity, and I should say, since the people are here, that uh, Sachin and Fedele were integral parts of this, uh, these sessions in room 316. Then dri driven by curiosity, we collectively learned entirely new fields of physics okay, and also contributed significantly. Okay. I should say that that process still continues. Uh, 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 following the brilliant idea of Kumar Gupta, who is also in the audience, okay, uh, we revived the, this room 316 as a Zoominar, okay, where we meet every two, once every two weeks to discuss ongoing research and exchange ideas. It is in my uh, understanding going very well it is benefiting a lot of people and if there are people in this audience who want to join it all that you have to do is send me a send me an email and i'll put you on the uh, on the list sir okay. now this the account will be so this is the process i mean i come to the end it is book it's an on there is no end to this process okay. we are continuing okay. uh, every week uh, every actually every Every other week also we meet on some other topic. Uh, personal, my personal career is much more busy than it has ever been because of the internet. Uh, I meet with Sachin who is here, uh, Parameshwar Nair who is in City College, uh, people in Brazil, uh, uh, essentially every week twice. Okay? And we discuss some problems we are doing. Then on Fridays we meet to have open discussions and exchange ideas and we could keep going try to learn new subjects and see what happens and try to try to generate ideas i mean uh, by discussion i mean when you have many brains which are these discussion sessions it is quite logical that since many brains are uh, addressing similar problems it is quite logical that new ideas will come and this is what is happening now this account will be quite incomplete if I did not mention George Sudarshan. He, was, he has been an important uh, person in my career. As I told you, he gave me the position in Syracuse. Okay. He, his uh, history is not dissimilar to me. Okay. He came from Kotem, the Kotem district in Kerala, which is, which is southern Kerala. He did not have, uh, but southern Kerala did not have any scientific tradition of note uh, there in from 13th to 15th century there was a school of mathematics which was flourishing not
not so far from uh, in the south of Kerala, near uh, Trichur and so forth. And uh, in fact, it, uh, and they've made very important contributions in pure mathematics, uh, mathematics and astronomy. But unfortunately, it faded away with the start of British imperialism and other uh, events that happened in our country. Okay? But in his honor, as you know, an institute has been opened in uh, in Koyukot. Okay? But as I say, how uh, this uh, this was in 13th to 15th century, but the Kotan district did not have a scientific tradition when George Sudarshan grew up. But it did have very advanced human indicators with a very high percentage of literacy, which continues to this day. To this day, this is part of George's formation. Okay? George joined TAFR after MSc in Madras Christi College and from there went to the University of Rochester. He was associated with Bob Marshall there. His imagination and creative powers, riot, I, should, I can only use the word, riotously flowered from that time. Okay? And he made very original contributions to many fields indeed. Uh, he already uh, understood issues of entanglement. Uh, some of you may know quantum computing. Uh, so what are called completely positive maps. He already understood and contributed to that. Uh, contributed to evolution equations on density matrices. Then he worked on quantum optics. Then weak interactions. Uh, the list is very long. For about two years, from 1982 to 1984, a group of us, which included George Mukunda, uh, a very eminent uh, and creative physicist, who is in the who was in the Indian Institute of Science in Bengaluru, Beppe Marmo and Franco Zakaria, who are from Napoli, and Jan Nilsson, who is no more, but who was from Göteborg. We used to meet every six months or so for intensive discussions on a physics problem. Uh, we will all uh, rent a place, uh, some house or something. Okay. We will somehow found, find some resources to do that. We will cook there and we will simply get locked up there and we will discuss from morning till night trying to address physics problems. Okay. Uh, the resources we found at that time, which Sachin actually mentioned on non abelian monopoles and uh, so forth, they, are, they still have an impact on our research. And they still have a very important, uh, 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 their very important uh, consequences for ongoing research in fundamental physics. So, what can I suggest to you? Okay. This is what I have been. In your situation, I would suggest, I, I don't know how difficult it is, I will get involved in internet sessions for sure. You can attend whole courses in internet now. Uh, without paying, uh, without any uh, financial outlay, except the, the electricity for the internet okay, and the internet. You can arrange study groups with friends and try to follow your interests with determination and steady application. Okay. With help, you are sure to receive from teachers like uh, uh, Atri Deshmukhya, Bishwiji, and I'm sure, and any of all of us okay, whom you contact, be certain that you will overcome your external limitations and progress fast academically. Okay. So that is what I would suggest that you should try. But of course, since I am here, I don't know what are the difficulties you, you encounter in trying to trying to uh, implement these ideas. Let me finally say a few words about the importance of group theory in physics, that, which is the topic of this workshop. I, I want to make general remarks. Okay. Uh, which will be uh, made more profound by the le lecturers whom you will hear. At a fundamental level, what group? How did group and groups enter physics? Groups established equivalences between events. We are familiar with equivalences. Okay? They establish the shared characteristics of different events. They they relations. For example, we have we are familiar with familiar with such relations in our lives. Okay? For example, members of the same family are related to each other. In physics, group theory establishes a more subtle relation. For example, in empty space, one direction is the same as any other direction. Okay? A physical system rotated in vacuum will have exactly the same properties as the first one. Okay? 
this property is encoded in a group, what is called the rotation group, and the fundamental dynamical laws of the system are required to be rotationally invariant. Okay? So it has become something like a, 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 a imperative. Anyone trying to make a physical theory has to make a physical theory, fundamental theory, has to make it rotationally invariant. Okay? Such a principle thus has become an overarching rule for constructing any fundamental theory. Okay? This part of the constitution governing all fund the fundamental theories. If one tries to make a fundamental theory and it does not uh, uh, respect rotational invariance, either it will be thrown away or some powerful reason has to be given as to what is happening. Okay? So this is powerful consequences. Even without knowing the details of the theory, it has powerful consequences. For example, the orbit of a planet around the sun is elliptical, typically elliptical. Rotational invariance asserts that this ellipse and all its rotation ellipses, ellipses. You can, for example, sun, uh, uh, Earth is going around the sun, it has some orbit. So you rotate that orbit, okay? all its rotated orbits are possible orbits of planets. So from one orbit, we have inferred the possibility on an infinite, uh, infinite number of other orbits, other possible orbits. And of course, we do see, and this is a prediction without even knowing the details of the theory. And of course, we do see planets with many rotated orbits. In quantum theory, the power of groups is even more in, uh, uh, invasive. Why? Because in quantum theory, some of you undoubtedly know, there is a fundamental principle called the superposition principle, which allows one to infer many more states of motion using... So, in quantum theory, I mean, in classical theory, if you have a orbit of a, uh, Earth, uh, one particular ellipse, which is an orbit of the Earth, and another one, which is the orbit of some other planet, okay? so let us say, two possible orbits of the Earth are two different uh, given ellipses, then we are done. We cannot say uh, between these two possible uh, states of motion, we cannot infer any more states of motion. But in quantum theory, these are described by what are called wave functions. And uh, uh, the, there comes the superposition principle. So then quant in quantum theory, from these two states of motion and their associated wave functions, by superposing, we can immediately infer the existence of infinitely more possible states of the system. Okay. Without any doing any work, uh, the uh, basic foundational rules of quantum theory says that they are allowed states. Okay. So uh, I'm sure that you will learn. Uh, so the consequence of uh, of uh, uh, symmetry is or groups is much more powerful in quantum theory as compared to classical theory. Uh, you will learn about these matters from my colleagues. Okay. Uh, now I should say that groups and symmetries have been generalized in different directions in mathematics and in physics. Okay. Let me say how, what happens in, uh, in the mathematical direction and how it comes into physics. Thus, it may be that a symmetry transformation can be applied only to selected subsystems. Okay. For example, it may be that to rotate a particular subsystem involves infinite energy. So you cannot rotate it. Okay. But there is no problem in uh, applying rotation to other subsystems of an ensemble. So the transformation which a group allows cannot be applied uniformly to all the members of this ensemble. Now, how do I mathematically describe this possibility? Such a possibility leads to what are called groupoids. Okay. So the notion of groupoids is a naturally emergent idea coming from groups. Okay. And now uh, groupoids um, is understood to be much more general than groups. Okay. And it is coming into physics in, uh, in different ways. There is another subtle development which I cannot uh, indicate to you in this talk, which are called quantum groups, which is a, another, uh, in fact, these two actually merge. Okay? They are also complementing each other. So there is another subtle development which involves what are called quantum groups. Quantum groups is a misleading phrase. They are more, much more general structures than groups and they are available only in quantum theory and has nowadays played, has been playing a very important role in uh, 
quantum mechanics, quantum theoretical systems, for example, in condensed matter physics, and also in uh, lattice systems, for example, and also uh, in quantum, uh, quantum field theory. Okay. So there are many new directions in which groups of themselves have been uh, uh, generalized. Okay. And uh, to know them, uh, know, uh, to get familiar with them, and what their meaning and consequences are, are indeed very exciting, uh, exciting idea, exciting activities. But you will hear about these exciting these ideas from my colleagues, okay, who will be talking to you in the coming weeks. Okay? And I think I should finish here. I thank you for all. Thank you all for giving me a patient hearing, and I wish you all best of luck. And if you want to ask questions, I am here. You can also ask questions. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, I'll switch off the uh, talk so, uh, anyone, any question? Okay, I'm here. No. Huh? Any participant wants to ask anything? Hello? Professor Chakraborty, yeah. can you mute? Yeah. Hello? Uh, Ma'am, can I yeah. ask him? Uh, sure. Actually, sir, it's about to email address uh, for this group discussion group. So, in case we get his email address to you, then also we can get it through department. Yeah. Possible. Hello. Uh, sir, you talked about your email address, uh, so that we'll email you uh, if you want to get involved in that group. So yeah. Uh, yeah. maybe through the department or uh, whatever you feel suitable. Yeah, Nilotpal, yeah. we can give it. Uh, you can get it from me. OK, OK. Start permits, I will give it to you. Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah, any question, any physics related question, please? There is one question from the chat box. There's somebody who is asking question yeah. why Quantum groups is misleading in the okay. misleading to call it oh. quantum. All right, because yeah, yeah, it is. It is in some way it's not a group. It is much more general than group. Okay, let me say something here, uh, okay, which uh, which may be a little bit abstract, but let me say one thing that has happened for sure in uh, quantum field theory is. Bishwajit knows this very well, that the notion of a manifold, for example, a sphere or a, a space, okay, has got replaced or is getting replaced by a much more powerful concept as by an algebra. Namely, you take all functions on a manifold, then represent these functions in some algebraic way, then there are there is a profound theorem which goes back to Gelfand and Neumark, okay, and subsequently refined by Alain Kuhn and his collaborators, which shows, shows that this you don't need the manifold concept, but you can replace it by an algebra. So in a similar way, what has happened is so the context then becomes an algebra, whereby quantum field theory is nowadays some of us, for example, Bishwajit or Sachin, are focusing on more and more. Okay? And what is happening is that the notion of groups has now got embedded in this algebraic concept. And using the algebraic context, uh, context which is much more general than purely groups, okay? you can represent uh, the existence of symmetries in a uh, much more generalized way. So that the, in the algebraic context, while groups are a particular case of the algebraic context, the algebra themselves need not form groups. Okay? So they are much more, they are not groups. Okay? The typical uh, uh, quantum group is not a group. It is an algebra okay, of, a, uh, of a particular sort. Okay? It's called, the, they are called half algebras. They are of a, algebras of a particular sort. So, and you are, cannot recover a group from that. Nevertheless, they make predictions uh, which are uh, uh, more general than what can be as accessed by using purely groups. So this is the in, line of development which is happening now.
Okay. I don't know whether I mean I can only give indications of what uh, in the short period I can only give indications of what is happening, but the other speakers can pick it up and tell you more. Thank you, sir. And any other question? Any? Uh... Can I can I request Mr. Latham Boyle to say something? He is an expert. Latham, you want to say uh, something? Say say something about quantum groups. You mean? Yeah, yeah. You have worked extensively on these things. You also may say something. Oh well, well, I I have worked on non-commutative geometry. Actually, no, there's kind of two different approaches to non-commutative geometry. Uh, one from the quantum groups perspective, and one from more like uh, the the perspective uh, suggested by Alain Kahn. And I, I've I've uh, mostly been working on that latter approach because of uh, the connection that it makes to the standard model of particle physics. And I'll, I'll have a chance to mention a little bit about that in my in my lectures later on. But so um, so I wouldn't call myself an expert on quantum groups, actually. In fact, I, 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 I'm, I'm curious to know what, now that I'm now that I'm on. Uh, what well, one thing I've wondered about is um, about quantum groups. Are they uh, this is a question for Professor Balachandran. Are they um, are they theoretical extensions, uh, primarily mathematical extensions of, of group theory, or are there known cases of uh, uh, experimental physical systems where they are sort of realized or, or, or needed in the description of those systems? Yes. That's one thing I've been curious about. Yeah. In, in integrable models, there are now a number of, what happened to your, your uh, photos suddenly disappeared. In integrable models, yeah, there are a number of integrable models now and, and conformal field theories. Quantum groups, for example, one particular quantum group which is very popular is SU2Q, okay, uh, which is a deformation of SU2, but it is not a group at all. SU2Q is not a group. Unless Q equal to 1, it is not a group. So, but it has a set of properties, the, uh, the group, uh, the, uh, that quantum group, as all quantum groups, have a certain number of properties. In particular, it gives you rules about composition of two subsystems and how to make a transformation of one related to another. So it has what they call, and it has a product. So it is generalizes the notion of standard groups and what is what is called the group algebra. Okay? But from the general perspective, one cannot infer a group. Okay? It is not a group in the usual sense, but nevertheless, they act on quantum fields okay? and give predictions. So, yes, they have actually ap appeared in integrable systems and uh, discussions of phase transitions. Ah. I suspect this, I don't know so much, that in the recent developments on uh, symmetry protected topological phases and uh, relative related areas, in particular the classification by Kitayev, I suspect, but I don't know, that these quantum groups, which are also, by the way, called Hoff algebras, have played a role, but I don't know. I think so. Well, I will give two lectures. I will give two lectures on quantum group Friday and Saturday. Good. Although my point of view will be geometrical, will be okay. Latham knows my my history and is similar to his. So I will uh, consider what happens if the geometry of a group becomes non-commutative. And this is one of the many definitions of quantum groups. One can have a, more than one uh, conference all devoted to quantum groups. Yes. So one of the way of seeing them is that if you have a group, which is a set of points, which if a, is a Lie group will be a differentiable manifold, then what happens if this uh, space becomes a quantum space? So it becomes something where things don't commute, roughly speaking. And I will give two lectures, uh, mainly leading to quantum groups as symmetries of quantum space-time. So I will talk towards the end in Kappa Minkowski. And uh, I will give only two lectures on quantum groups, because, of course, only limit of space, but also limits of competence. Uh, there are various aspects of quantum groups, and I only know and feel confident of giving a lecture only on one little corner of the of the issue 
so I will tell things that, oh, well, I will follow the, the lesson of the teacher of my teacher, was Ramakrishna Val said, uh, teaching things that I don't know. And I will, uh, I will be in this uh, great tradition of uh, teaching things. So if, if some of the students will be patient enough to last for a week, I will uh, give some answers to what that quantum group is and uh, talk a little bit about that. Okay, thank you both. Okay, so I think uh, TRG sir is there with us. Uh, so can you sir please make some comments? Professor Govind Rajan? TRG I think has left already, I don't know. Yeah, I, he, I don't see him. Actually. He left me for some time. Meeting. Okay, okay. okay. Maybe he's okay. gone. Uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe. We are getting delayed. So I had, a, uh, I had a complaint against him. He had promised me three years ago he will take me to Kerala, which I have not gone and I'm ashamed of myself being an Indian that to an academician not going to Kerala till now. And he had promised me that he will take me there, but he has not fulfilled it till now. So today I thought that I will ask him, but what is the plan? When are you going? But he left. But I will catch up, catch up with him. Okay. Okay, Bal, again, I enjoyed uh, the talk as usual, though it was not a physics talk in that sense. Always, whenever I had heard throughout my life many talks from you, it was immensely focused in physics, what was going on. But I came to know today some aspect of your early life. How did you end up? in Syracuse and uh, I'm thrilled and you know something I feel maybe the present generation is in a comfort zone maybe we should force them to isolation then only, uh -huh. we, can, then only we can expect some fundamental pieces from them okay thank you Sudhagar are we thank you, sir. are we concluded thank you, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, if there is no more question, then uh, we can conclude the session here. Uh, okay. I would like to thank you, Professor uh, Balachandran, sir, to really be here with us in spite of all the issues. Uh, we are really blessed to have you uh, here amidst us today. And I would like to thank all the other uh, participants who are here, uh, faculties from other institutions and uh, from Asham University, as well as students and participants. I thank you all. Uh, wish you a very good night. We stop here today. Okay. Thank you, Adri. Thank Bye. you.